So one by one, I'm just going to pour these colors into that cup and we'll see how colorful we can make it. What have I just done? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my Fluid Art channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. It's no longer January, so I'm not officially in my spinning painting series, but I'm doing another spinning painting today. Happy February. We're diving into some Valentine's Day pours. So I'm doing an open cup pour today. I have done open cups before, but it's been quite a while since I've done one. So I've got a whole bunch of lovely colors here and all of the details about what colors they are, what brands they are, are in the video description. All my paint is mixed with Floetrol and then with water. About one part paint to somewhere between two and three parts Floetrol, depending on how thick the paint was to begin with. So a thinner paint might get one to two, and a thick tube paint might get one to three. Um, the consistency is sort of a medium thin, so it flows nicely, whoops, I'm dripping, flows nicely, doesn't leave a whole lot of a trace. I'll show a different color just in case it shows up better. Of course, this one's flowing more thickly, so I'm going to add some water to that, because that is not as thin as I want it to be. When you're doing pores, that don't use silicone oil, even when they do use silicone oil, but especially when they don't, uh, the thicker your paint is, the less reactive it's going to be. And the thinner your paint is, the more reactive it's going to be. So if you want your paints to react with each other and make natural cells, then having them on the thinner side is a good idea. But I have three different metallics, a bunch of other colors, and then, since it's Valentine's themed, I'm using a heart-shaped cookie cutter as my open cup. If you don't want to use a cookie cutter, you can just take like a little plastic cup and cut the bottom off and use that as your open cup. But this is what I'm going to use today. I've got a bunch of white as my base coat. And that's mixed to the same consistency. I'd call that like a medium thin. I have a 14 inch square canvas and I think we're ready to go. Let's make a painting. So to start out, I'm going to put a pretty big uh, area of my base paint right here in the middle. And it's a nice thick puddle because you want the open cup to go into it so that the uh, other paints can flow kind of underneath that white base paint. But I'm going to put a little bit on the corners just to help it spread all the way. Okay, and we've got more there if we need it, and I will be putting some of the white into the cup along with the other colors. But let's go ahead and get this open cup placed right there in the middle. Okay, so one by one, I'm just going to pour these colors into that cup. Once I've got a fair amount of them in, I'll lift it up a little bit, let those colors flow out under the white, keep adding colors, and we'll see how colorful we can make it. Um, I'm going to start with some of this pink. And now some silver. I'm using paints from several different brands, and I have several metallics in there. And when you use different brands of paint, they're going to have slightly different densities. And if you use metallics, then they often will be a different density than other paints. So those different factors can help give you cells without silicone or without a cell activator, because you're just sort of playing the different paint densities off of each other. All right, maybe let's add a little bit more white in there. OK, 
kind of forget which colors I've put in. Man, this is, it's making a nice seal right now. You can see how those colors are really stacking up in there. Okay, I've got most of the colors. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's lifting. Do you see? It lifted itself up. So I'll just go ahead and lift it a little bit more. Let them gently flow out. just a little bit and I'm just gonna add these colors kind of in a random order I have no no particular method to this whenever you stack colors next to each other one of the things I'm looking for is contrast you know will this color look good next to this color when you see a layer of for example black next to navy blue you maybe can't tell that it's layers but if you have black up against white then it becomes a very obvious layer so Having some contrast between your layers can help. Okay, let's let a little bit more of it come out from here. Oh, it's flowing there. See some cells starting to open up, so that's wonderful. Oh, it's starting to go by itself. So you can do a traveling open cup, which is where as you lift it, you kind of pull it across the canvas. And that's a great effect. But for this one, I want the center. I want it all to flow out of the center. So I'm not moving the cup, just lifting it. So I do have some lines here from like the tip of the heart and this and this. So it's, I may regret using the heart. It may turn into a strange, strange pattern because of that, but we'll see. There's an interesting streak here. I'm not quite sure why why it's not coming out more as cells. Okay, this is interesting. I have a lot of beautiful multicolored cells right here around the edge. And then as it moves towards the middle, it all turns kind of purple. And I'm wondering if my colors are blending too much. I might have enough paint on here as it is. I'm afraid that if I keep adding more and more colors, the really interesting pattern is gonna be out here on the edge instead of in the middle. One thing I could try is just adding a whole bunch of white. All right, let me try torching a little bit and see what kind of colors I'm getting. Not a ton. So I'm going to just work on slowly pulling this up. Whoa, look at that! Ha! I wasn't even meaning to make a heart pattern in the middle, but that is kind of cute. <laughs> I think it's going to end up looking more like a triangle than a heart. Let me go rinse this off, and then I'll decide what to do. I don't think I'm going to leave it as a heart, but I am going to make a little... I'm going to try to pattern it a little bit. So I've got the end of a paintbrush, and I'm going to make almost like a little feather pattern, pulling the centers in and the corners out. Well, that's kind of cool. Unexpected for sure. Was not planning on doing that, but I like it. 
Oh yeah, there it is. Little fingertip kiss to bring all those points together. Okay, it's time to start spinning this to stretch that design out. Pretty sure we have enough paint on here. We shall see. I think we have enough paint on here. Okay, so as I suspected, the beautiful patterning is right here on the edge. All these wonderful cells. The center, mm, I don't love it anymore. And the middle has just turned kind of gray. Let me see if I can bring up any more cells with a torch. It's a shame because some of this is really beautiful. This stuff up here, these cells are gorgeous, but I don't like the middle. It is, it's bland and purple. Not that there's anything wrong with purple, but it's like all the colors kind of smush together into one color instead of staying separate. And that's not what I wanted. So I still have lots of my colors. I have lots of my white. I suppose I could try a traveling open cup and see what that does. Another idea I had was a balloon, balloon kisses, but I have a feeling that because these colors are mostly blended, it's only going to blend them further instead of making it look nicer. These cells are beautiful. So I don't really want to lose them. Like I don't want to start all over because I really like those, but I'm not liking the middle and I'm not liking any of this. Okay, I've decided to go drastic. We're gonna try to save this. It might not be savable, but we're gonna try. So this is a little three ounce plastic cup that I cut the bottom of, off of. So this is what I usually use as an open cup. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put it right here on the corner of that center design. And I'm gonna try to do a traveling open cup going this way. And then I'm going to tilt to stretch it this direction because I love these corners and I'd love to save them, but I don't like this. So I want to try to change this and then spread it out this way. So we're going to start with a bunch of white because one of the main problems here is that it got too dark and there's not enough, not enough white. Also, I think I'm going to pull out some of the colors and only do the ones that I really like. Okay. Start with some of this nice rouge. Starting to move. So I'm just going to continue the move this way a bit. I have no idea how this is going to turn out. It's looking very different. Definitely have some cells opening up. I just am running out of paint colors, so I can't do this much longer. And I'm going to take this all the way off the edge. Okay, that is a strange little design. <laughs> <laughs> ah. What have I just done? I don't know. I don't know what I've just done. We'll see. We'll see what happens. I got to get it off of the spinner. So let me just move the spinner over here and then I'll move the painting here and we'll deal with the spinner later. There we go. Okay. This is very interesting. So I'm going to turn it this way. 
because I want to stretch it all this direction. All this new stuff I want to bring down towards the end. leaving perhaps those original corners that I liked. Okay, yeah, I'm liking this now. Hey, look at that! That's pretty cool. So I kept the one original corner. This one, I felt like it was not working so well. There were lines that were kind of up against it that I didn't like. Plus, I really liked the pattern of the rest of it, and I thought if we pulled it more this way, it would look better. This is fantastic. All right, I think, I think it's gonna look better this way. No, maybe not. Maybe it is better this way. Yeah. Been used to this being the top corner, but I actually like it better as a bottom because it's kind of darker. I think I'm pretty much happy with this. I'm going to torch it one more time just to see if there's any other little cells I can bring up. But for the most part, I'm really happy. And we got lots of cool colors in here. Awesome. Let me give you a close-up. Okay, so this one ended up stunning and so unexpected. I love these almost ice cream looking washes where it goes from that color streaking into the white. Cool section here of that gray purple with some lacing. Then this section here of the silver, it almost looks green in the right light, so that's really interesting. Cute little cells there. And then look at this beautiful band. I love that rouge and gold and all of that. Lots of cells there. Beautiful, beautiful. And then these are some of those original cells that I really wanted to keep. I love that pink and the purplish that looks kind of blue. And then this set of cells this one, you can't really see it where the silver's shining. It's like these horizontal layers in the middle of round cells, which is really spectacular. So I'm glad I was able to save that corner because I really liked it. But overall, it's an absolutely whimsical, very romantic piece. So I like it a lot. Let me show you how it looks when it's dry. Okay, it's all dry. Oh man, these metallics are nice and shiny, especially that silver. So shiny. And then the gold there too. I love how metallics pop up when the paintings dry and you go, oh yay, I was hoping that it would be there. So on these kind of maroon cells, I think the outer edge of that is metallic magenta. So we'll see when I put varnish on it, whether that kind of pops more. But overall, it dried really, really nicely. There was no shifting, no warping, no bugs. So that's always nice. I just think it's crazy, these layers here. The layers that run side to side, even as the cells open up in circles. It's so cool. Um, yeah, so I was very, very pleased with how this turned out. Obviously, I started one way and had to pivot in the middle. My son says all of these cells look like dinosaur skin, but pink. <laughs> but I just wanted to talk about, 
you know, the cells that formed, it doesn't surprise me which colors popped up. And I wanted to talk about that just a little bit because what colors do we see primarily in the cells? Okay, so in our original cells, we had a lot of that lighter pink, silver, uh, and the, the gray purple. And then in the traveling open cup, we have a lot of the rouge and the gold and the silver and then the gray purple. So those are the main colors that popped up. They were either metallics or they're these ones. Now this is the Master's Touch Acrylics brand. This is from Hobby Lobby. And I have noticed before in Dutch pours that uh, these seem to have a lighter density, which means they're more likely to make cells. Now there can be a problem with that when they make more cells than you want and then they take over a painting. So just make sure that you're using them and you're using colors that you really like. Because when you're using a paint of a lighter density and your paint is nice and thin, that color might take over. So here you can see we got lots of rouge cells, we have lots of gray purple cells, and then metallics as well. Often those are a lighter density, so I wasn't surprised to get lots of metallic cells. So that's just a little lesson on density and how picking particular colors or brands can help you get more cells or less cells. Thank you guys for watching this uh, Valentine's Day open cup pour. I hope it inspired you to try something new and to show you that even if it looks like a painting is perhaps not going the way you wanted it, you can always just experiment and maybe bring something even better. I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.